Welcome back to Learn As You Explore for the fifth video in the MBOT2 tutorial series. In the last video, we saw how to measure the distance to an obstacle using the ultrasonic sensor of our MBOT2 robot. In this video, we'll dive into obstacle avoidance. We will develop a block program where the robot keeps driving straight until it reaches an obstacle, turns 90 degrees, and continues driving until it reaches the next obstacle and repeats. Let's dive right in. Let's go to the mblock code editor by going to ide.mblock.cc. First, let's add the mbot2 robot to our devices. Click on add right here. Select the mbot2 robot and click OK. Now let's add an event so we can control when the program starts running on the robot. As in the previous projects, we will use button B, the triangular button on the CyberPy, to do this. Let's go to the events block category and use the when button A pressed block, but we'll change this to button B instead. When we press button B, we want the program to start and keep repeating until we press another button to make it stop running. We don't want the robot to start the program and keep running without having a way to stop it. To find a block that can help us achieve this, let's identify the key functionality that we want from my previous statement. Once button B is pressed, we want the program to repeat until we do something. In this case, press another button. In the control block category, there's a block that does exactly this and it is called repeat until, which repeats the blocks that we define within the repeat until block until some condition is reached. So let's click this and drag it on to our workspace. In this case, we want to repeat the program until a button is pressed, so we can stop the robot driving once we press that button. Since we use button B to control the start of the program, let's use button A to stop the program. The space within the repeat until block with this hexagonal shape is available so we can provide a condition that we want. In general, all conditional blocks have this hexagonal shape in M block. If we look into the sensing block category, we see one such conditional block that says button A pressed, and it has the same hexagonal shape, which represents a condition block. Let's drag this and drop it into the repeat until block condition. All right, the structure of our program is looking great so far. Let's do a quick review before proceeding further. So far, our program says when button B is pressed, we're going to repeat some actions until button A is pressed. Let's move on to defining the actions that we want to repeat within the repeat until block. Now let's think about what we want the robot to do. We want the robot to keep driving straight as long as there are no obstacles very close to it. If the robot detects an obstacle close to it, we want to turn 90 degrees in some direction. For this project, let's define the direction of turning to be left, meaning that when the robot detects an obstacle close to it, we want the robot to turn 90 degrees to the left and otherwise keep driving forward. This will be your objective and I'll keep it on the screen here until we're done with our program since it will be a good reference for us as we build the program. Doing something if a condition is met and doing something else if the condition is not met is exactly the definition of the if-then-else block. We can find this block in the control block category right here. Click and drag the block to be within the repeat until block. Next, let's define the condition that we want in the if block. From our objective, we see that we want to turn 90 degrees to the left when the robot detects an obstacle. From the ultrasonic sensor demo tutorial, we know that we can find the distance to obstacles in front of the robot using the ultrasonic sensor. So let's use that to detect if an obstacle is too close to the robot. And in that case, we will make the robot turn left by 90 degrees. 
we now have to define what too close is with respect to the ultrasonic sensor. The ultrasonic sensor measures distance in centimeters. We will define too close to be 20 centimeters or shorter for this example. You can play with this by increasing or decreasing the value and observing how the robot behaves. But 20 centimeters, which is around 8 inches, is a reasonable value to use. OK, so now we want to do two things. First, get the distance measurement from the ultrasonic sensor. And second, check if the distance measurement is less than 20 centimeters. We are effectively doing a comparison operation as the condition for this if-then-else block. Let's go to the operators block category to find a less than comparison operator block. This block is the one that we want. It checks if a value that we define is less than another value, again, that we define. In our case, we want the first value to be the ultrasonic sensor's distance measurement and the second value to be 20 centimeters. Let's click and drag this block and insert it within the if condition block. Since we want the first value within the less than operator block to be the ultrasonic sensor's distance measurement, let's head to the ultrasonic sensor to block category. To do that, scroll down and here it is, the ultrasonic sensor to block category. Let's use this block right here to get the distance from the ultrasonic sensor. Drag that onto the first operand block within the less than operator block. Since we want to compare this distance measurement from the ultrasonic sensor to a fixed value of 20 centimeters, we can directly type in the value here by clicking on it and then entering 20. You're making great progress here. We have the structure of the program done now, so let's do a quick review. When button B is pressed, we want to start the program and keep it repeating until button A is pressed which will stop the program. If the ultrasonic sensor detects an obstacle that is less than 20 centimeters away, we will do something that we are yet to define. Otherwise, we will do something else that we are also yet to define. Great, now let's instruct our robot to turn left 90 degrees within the if block and instruct it to move forwards otherwise in the else block. For these motion-related commands, head on over to the mbot chassis block category. And we see the turn left 90 degrees until done block, which is exactly what we want. Click and drag this within the if block and release. The else part here is to instruct what the robot should do when there is no obstacle close to it. In this case, our objective says that we should continue driving forward. Let's go back to the mbot 2 chassis block category, and we see the moves forward at some RPM block. This means that the robot will continue to move forward at the specified speed. Remember, RPM is revolutions per minute, which is a measure of wheel speed. Let's drag this into our else block. From my testing, I've found that 50 RPM is a bit too fast for me, so I'm going to make this 30 RPM. Feel free to adjust the speed as you would like after doing some initial testing with 30 RPM. Wow, that was a lot of work. I'm proud that you've followed along so far. We're almost done. We just have one last thing. Let's think about the case where the robot continues driving forward at 30 RPM, like we've defined here, and we want to stop the program. When button A is pressed, we come out of the repeat until block, and we end the program. However, since the last command was to move forward at 30 RPM, that is going to make the wheels continue to drive forward, even though the program has stopped. What we really want is to stop the wheels before the program ends. To achieve this, we will go back to the mbot 2 chassis category and use the stop encoder motor all block. Let's drag this and drop it right after the repeat until block.
This will instruct the robot to stop both of its encoder motors, which is just the technical name for the blue motors that drives the wheels of the robot. This way, even if we were moving at 30 RPM and we press the button A, the wheel motors will be instructed to stop driving just before we end the program. So the robot will come to a full stop just after button A is pressed. Awesome work! We now have our complete program and we're ready to test it on the robot. Make sure that the robot is powered on and is connected to your computer with the USB cable. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll add a link in the description to the exact timestamp from one of my previous videos where I show you how to do that. Once your robot is powered on and connected to your computer using the USB cable, click on Upload and then click on Serial. Select the USB serial device and click Connect. Great, your robot is now connected. Click on Upload Code. Wait for the upload to complete. And great, your code has now been uploaded. You can now unplug the USB cable from the robot. Great, let's head on over to the robot and see our program in action. For the test setup, I have a few walls here to check that the robot can detect the walls as obstacles. Turn left 90 degrees when it gets close to the walls and then repeat. We have the program on the side and throughout the test, I will point to the section of the program being executed. This will give you a nice visual understanding of the program. We're going to start our program by pressing button B. We see the robot continue to drive straight until an obstacle is less than 20 centimeters away and then turn left by 90 degrees and this process repeats. Let's stop the robot by pressing the square A button. We now see that the wheel motors or the encoder motors have stopped and the program has ended. Congratulations! I know this was a lot of work. I hope you had fun joining me in this project and learning how to implement our very first program, instructing the robot on how to behave and move based on our objective. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.